Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Sound Advice. My name is Jeff McKenzie, and we are going to dive into compression with a purpose. And in this first video, this introductory video into compression with a purpose, is we're going to talk about dynamic range. And this is what's going to set the base for what we're going to start building on as we get further into talking about compression. So if this interests you, please stay tuned as we get into dynamic range and compression with the purpose. Now we're going to just talk about compressing with a purpose. And what I want to do is basically let's go over some fundamentals about compression and we're just going to continue to build from there the same way we did with eq and with a purpose we're going to do take this same approach with uh compression with a purpose okay and the first thing is is um why do we want to use compression okay and that answer is to control dynamic range okay so now I'm pretty sure it's like, so what is dynamic range? And what dynamic range is, how loud to how soft a sound source is. And one thing that you have to understand and wrap your mind around is our hearing. We can hear very loud things to very quiet things, you know. So basically give you an example, it's like we could hear a jet taking off. OK, just like we could hear someone whispering in our ear. That's how broad our dynamic range is. And so we can use that technique. Um, well, we can use to our advantage and we could use the technique of compression to have a dynamic range in our mix where things that need to be soft are soft and they're and they're heard and things that we want to be loud they're also heard but everything is cohesive okay so that's the importance of compression that's why i said that getting a sound source clear with eq is very important and then being able to control the dynamic range of that sound source is very important and that is the battle that's that's the name of the game in 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 eqing and compression that's why i said that the these two tools your eq and your compressor are the two most important tools that you have at your disposal besides your ears your ears are your first foremost number one but having that eq and compression is the next set of tools that can really help get that mix going. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, dynamic range. OK, and I have a slide here. That we can look at a screenshot of dynamic range. OK, so and what you can see here is that we have peaks. You know, we have a lot of peaks. You see these peaks. OK, and then we have a lot of soft stuff. See, like right here, we got this large peak and then some soft stuff. And then we got some large peaks and then it gets quiet, starts getting soft again. Then it gets quiet again. OK, this is something that is out of control. OK, so this would be poking, especially these parts of the of the sound source would be poking out of the mix. And we need to tame those things where the energy is still there. But it's controlled energy now inside of the mix, you know, so the listener is not just getting something that just burst out a burst of loudness that comes out and then it gets quiet again. Then another burst of loudness. You just want to you know, you want that loudness, but it's controlled and then it's it's entamed with the um, with the other sources that are that are low, like we were looking at here. So. This is the this is what dynamic range is. OK, and this is what it looks like when compression is controlling that dynamic range. As we can look at this 
this waveform right here. Okay, so we're seeing before compression. Don't worry about threshold. We'll talk about threshold. But what I want you to do is just look at how it's very dynamic. You know, it's 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 uneven, you know, and then after compression, look how everything is evened out. You see, it's more even. OK, so it can sit. So this would be able to sit better in our in our mix you know you would be able to hear this and it won't overtake the guitar so say if this was vocal you know this was a vocal waveform this vocal waveform won't overtake the the guitars because it has been compressed down so that it won't take over all right so now let's look at something else about compression and the next thing that we're going to see is what is compression and compression is simply a automated volume control so all it's going to do is is we set the parameters with threshold attack release we set those parameters and ratio um we set those and the then once we have those settings made now the compressor is going to work on those settings okay and all it's going to do is when things need to be brought down let me bring up this again so when things need to be brought down like these peaks need to be brought down the compressor is going to bring them down because we had it we have it set at a point where we want the the compressor to be triggered to bring these down so it's going to bring them down and then it's going to have a part of the compression where it brings some things up as well so we can bring this up to make it even which looks like this see we brought some things down and we brung now those things are even out now it's more even we don't want to squash the life out of it where 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 it just doesn't have any um you know we can't hear anything we still want to hear the instrument but we're just making it even in in the mix and that's what that's what compression does it it controls the dynamics it brings things that need to be brought down it brings them down and the things that need to be brought up it brings them up so that now we have a good balance of of the dynamic range of that of that instrument so hopefully this is bringing a um some clarity to you about compression we're going we're going this is just a tip of the iceberg we're going to dive deep into this but um but this is just the introductory into compression so that we'll know what why why we use compression and um so hopefully i cleared that up for you so we're just going to go back up to the black chair and close this video out okay so i hope um we kind of cleared up about dynamic range and uh what dynamic range is and mainly um compression is a tool to control that and we want to use the human ear to our advantage, the way the human ear hears uh, with dynamic range. We want to be able to use that to our advantage. And compression helps to be able for us to do that. Um, because we want all elements to be heard. We want all elements to sound cohesive in the mix. We don't want anything poking out and getting um loud to where it's it's hurting to the ears or anything like that but we would just want to keep everything in control in a, in a in a good balance and having a dynamic range where you can hear everything without straining your ears and uh, things of that nature so uh we're gonna keep rolling with this compression with the purpose this was just the um the the foundation we're just setting the foundation because that's what we're dealing with is the dynamic range so we will i will be back next week with another video um please check out my um my website at sound device for you letter U dot com go look at my services go check out my music um be sure to follow me on instagram uh whenever you get a chance and be sure to subscribe like 
and um and and let's just keep you know let's just keep learning and uh we're just going to keep rolling so thank you for listening once again my name is jeff mckenzie this has been sound advice and i will see you on the next one mm-hmm.